Welcome, one and all, in here, out there, all around the world, to The Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Everyone... Everyone excited about the Super Bowl this Sunday? Yeah. Travis Taylor, Vegas, baby? Yeah. Well, tough nuts, we're talking about constitutional law. <laughs> because today, the Supreme Court heard oral arguments in the case about Colorado kicking Trump off that state's ballot. This is... And this is an historic, monumental case. In fact, it's such a big deal that last night people lined up and waited for seats in the viewing gallery. <laughs> Though evidently one guy was just in line for an Apple Vision Pro. <laughs> Arguing the case for Trump today was former Texas Solicitor General and least popular display at Madame Tussauds. <laughs> Jonathan Mitchell. Uh, uh, Mitchell, Mitchell here has a reputation as a tough litigator. One former colleague told Politico he has a strong conviction for what he thinks the law is. <laughs> Actually, not the best compliment you could give. Oh, yeah, this guy is a great surgeon. He will definitely remove what he thinks is your appendix. <laughs> All right? Mitchell, uh, this Mitchell fella, he has a history with the Supreme Court. He's argued before them in the past, and during law school, he maintained a website called Scalia Shrine, in which he posted opinions and quotes from his favorite justice. You had a website devoted to your favorite Supreme Court justice? <laughs> now, I know I'm a man who has read The Lord of the Rings too many times to count, <laughs> but I just want to say, nerd! <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. In, in their written argument, Trump's lawyers pinned their hopes mainly on semantics. A lot of people say your supporters are anti-semantic, but not me. <laughs> I love the semantics. You know they invented bagels. <laughs> here's, here's an example. Uh, for instance, Mitchell claims the insurrection clause of the Constitution applies only to people who took an oath to support the Constitution, but presidents <laughs> swear an oath to preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution. The word support does not appear. Now, I'm not a lawyer, but I wear a suit professionally, so I feel, I feel qualified to say that that is dumb. It's like saying, honey, I know I swore till death to us part, but we never said whose death. <laughs> and I personally think me banging my Pilates instructor is what Queen Elizabeth would have wanted. <laughs> now, Trump, yeah, sure. Anyway, uh... Trump's lawyers have also pointed out that the 14th Amendment says people who engaged in an insurrection cannot hold office. It doesn't say they can't run for office. <laughs> but the point of running for office is to hold office. Unless you're Nikki Haley, we're not sure what her point is. <laughs> oh, also, there's, there's established precedent here. People are disqualified from running for president all the time because they don't meet the criteria for holding office. For instance, you have to be a natural-born American citizen and over 35 years old. Those are the only rules preventing us from having President Petit Bebe. <laughs> you know his campaign promise. Goo goo, ha ha ha. Wee wee. My diaper is full of wee wee. <laughs> but despite all this, the smart money says Trump's lawyers are going to win. All of the justices, all nine, seem skeptical that one state could do this on their own. Here's Elena Kagan. I think that the question that you have to confront is why a single state should decide who gets to be president of the United States. In other words, you know, this question of whether a former president is disqualified for insurrection uh, to be president again is, you know, just say it. It sounds awfully national to me. Yes, it's a national decision. Can you imagine if one single state was allowed to decide who gets to be president? Today it's Colorado. Next time it could be Florida. <laughs> I'm sorry, they what? <laughs> no, they didn't. <laughs> President Gore would never allow that to happen. Hey. The case uh, before the court is called Anderson v. Trump because it was brought by former Colorado state senator and grandma watching you back out of the driveway until you give a little honk, Norma Anderson. Now, Norma, who is a spry 91 years young, 
says she's a Republican, but has a greater loyalty to the Constitution. I'm one of those weird people. I read the Constitution quite often. If something comes up, and I'm curious, I have one that I keep next to where I sit and watch TV. I also have one in my purse. <laughs> That is really great. That is, I think that is absolutely awesome, although I would not want to be stuck behind her in the checkout lane. <laughs> I have a coupon in here somewhere. Hold on. But first, we the people of the United States, in order to form a... Let me finish, young lady, or I swear to God I will write a check. <laughs> now, as far as whether she'll win the case, Norma had this to say. Do I think I'll win? I don't know. It's like shooting craps. You don't never know what you're gonna get. I gotta say, a gambling analogy is not what I expected from a sweet 91-year-old lady. It's like shooting craps. It's either boxcars and Trump has taken off the ballot, or it's snake eyes and Sammy the Bull Alito takes my thumbs. <laughs> so, um, I got this right. It seems like it seemed like it was a good day for the MAGA crowd, wouldn't you say? It seemed like a good day for the MAGA, but they still have something to be mad about. Don't you worry about that. Because remember how a while back, um, they found classified documents at Joe Biden's house, and Merrick Garland appointed a special prosecutor to look into it? Well, today, we got the results of the investigation in a report, and the special counsel will not seek criminal charges against President Biden. So, if you're... Go ahead. Sure, why not? Fine. So if you're in a fantasy league for presidential indictments, it's still Trump 91, every other president ever, zero. <laughs> now, you got that? Can you clean that up? But this report could hurt Joe. It's an election year, and polls show half the country is not willing to vote for an unindicted non-criminal. Now, the, the special counsel is a former Trump Justice Department official, and he name-checked his old boss when explaining why he's not bringing charges. He cited Biden's cooperation with investigators, unlike Trump, who refused to return classified material after being given multiple chances to avoid prosecution. This is clearly a deep state witch hunt. I saw proof in a classified document, which I will not return, because right now it's propping up the leg of the omelet bar. Now, the report uh, also includes photos of the places the documents were found at Biden's home, including this one of Biden's garage. From the looks of that, I'm guessing they also found confiscated a pigeon's nest, 3,000 takeout menus from the 80s, and a box of Nokia chargers labeled, still good. <laughs> uh, the report was not all roses for Biden, I have to say. After interviewing Biden multiple times, the special counsel described the president as having diminished faculties and said he presents himself as a sympathetic, well-meaning, elderly man with a poor memory. Who oh boy. <laughs> but it does explain those yard signs. Biden 2024. Now, hang on. What I come out to this yard for? <laughs> a new docuseries uh, on Netflix right now is depicting Alexander the Great as gay, and it is sparking conservative fury. Conservatives haven't been this mad since Netflix's recent game show, Is It Gay Cake? <laughs> The six-part docuseries features historians and dramatic reenactments of Alexander's life. And in the first episode, Alexander is seen kissing his good friend and possible lover, Hephaestion. Look, sexuality is complex. A man kissing another man doesn't automatically mean he's gay. He could just be interviewing Andrew Garfield. <laughs> all right? <laughs> Happens all the time. <laughs> All I'm asking, all I'm asking is don't judge till you've walked a mile on Andrew Garfield's lips. <laughs> but Alexander the Great was probably not Alexander the Straight, because according to historians, Hephaestion really was perhaps Alexander's greatest love, noting that the Greeks didn't have a word for homosexuality or to be gay. There was just being sexual, yes. Back then, there was only one sexual orientation, bang everything you can until you die of a paper cut at 26. <laughs> But, of course, that did not stop some right-wing trolls from getting mad on Twitter, with one user named And Wokeness tweeting, Netflix made a new documentary about Alexander the Great. Within the first eight minutes, they turned him gay. <laughs> That's just historically inaccurate. Read a book 
or a Greek vase. <laughs> now, here's the thing. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. If, if, if you pause your DVR, you'll see that CBS made us blur that. But you can see it in Netflix's new docuseries, My Big Fat Greek Collection of Horned Up Pottery. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Andre 3000 and Justin Hartley. When we come back, 